The crisis enveloping the Electoral Commission has overshadowed tomorrow's first sitting of state parliament since the election. Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk will have an easier job passing legislation this term with a narrow majority. But the opposition has already tried to derail the first order of business, electing a speaker. Anastasia Palaszczuk joined me in the studio earlier. Premier, welcome. One of the most controversial bills you're going to introduce this year is your tree clearing legislation. When will you introduce it? The legislation will be introduced during the first half of this year, and let me make it very clear. Um, I don't see it as being controversial, Matt, because this was an election commitment. I keep my word. This is no surprise. Everybody knew this was going to be my commitment before the election, and it will be implemented. But let me tell you one thing. LNP are already campaigning on it. Deborah well, Franklinton is putting out a video this week uh, well, fighting I've been, it before she's even seen well, the legislation. That's how controversial it is. Well, I've been out west. I've been speaking with people. But also, to let me say this, it will not be rushed through the Queensland Parliament. It will go through the legislative process, as I have promised, and that means people will get to have their say. Curtis Pitt, Opposition Leader Deb Frecklington, was here in the studio last night saying the LNP opposes him as Speaker of Parliament because they say he's misled Parliament and possibly will refer him to the Ethics Committee should the Speaker of the House be also being investigated by the Ethics Committee? Oh, well, look, that's a matter for them. You know, here we are, we thought we were going to see a refreshing new look uh, from the opposition, and of course we're not. So what I say to them is, Curtis Pitt is a man of integrity. He's one of the most well-respected uh, members of Parliament that Queensland has seen. And I would also go as far as saying he'll be getting some cross-bench support as well. Oh, so you've already sounded out the Qatar party for support? We have sounded out some of the crossbench to support and him Greens. as well. Okay, and, and the Greens MP. Some of them. Okay, uh, Adani, how enthusiastic are you about their mine proposal? Is your support waning? The Adani mine is just one of several mines, and they need to stack up financially on their own two feet without taxpayers' money. But you don't seem as enthusiastic as last year when you were at the final investment uh, approval uh, ceremony where you were saying, you know, it's a message to other investors that the government will back you 100%. Do you still back Adani 100%? I've always maintained my commitment that no taxpayers' money would go towards the building of that railway line. They need to stack up economic and financial. But what we are seeing, and let's be very clear here, $20 billion on the books of investment by private enterprise into Queensland in renewable energy projects. $5 billion already happening. Out on the Western Downs, uh, I was just recently out at Bar Calden, and uh, there are solar farms popping up left, right and centre. I was up in the Clare Valley, uh, Clare Valley Solar Farm, looking at that. Companies are also building solar as well. We have so much investment in this state that is creating jobs and regional jobs. So, you know, I don't think everyone should just be relying on one single project. Can I just bring you back to the question? Do you sure. still support Adani 100%? I support projects that will deliver jobs for Queenslanders and it needs to stack up financially. All right, Premier, unfortunately we're out of time, but hopefully we can have you back soon. Love to. Thanks, Matt.